All right, uh, what we're going to be focusing on in this topic is is getting into uh, watersheds. We, we've we finished looking at water pollution and how pollutants can get into our, our fresh water. Uh, now we're going to look at watersheds, what they are, why they're important, um, especially in getting into um, keeping them clean uh, for, a, for a fresh water supply. So here we go. We all, we everywhere we live, there are watersheds, uh, either man-made or naturally uh, made, depending on where you're at. Um, and they're very important to the community as a whole. What a watershed is, uh, it's usually an area where you have water that is filtered uh, from drain off, either from rain, uh, snow, uh, any type of precipitation, and that, that drain or that runoff will uh, flow to a, a stream or river. Uh, maybe it'll eventually make its way to a, uh, to a pond or lake uh, or wetland. Some of the main, uh, in this area, some of the main types of, of watersheds are going to be lakes and wetlands. Okay, You can think in the area, some of the man-made lakes, a lot of the runoff from, uh, from precipitation will make it there, but we also have uh, natural wetlands in the area, especially up in McKinney. There's one that's that's a pretty big uh, uh, wetland area. Uh, but those are the main ones that you're looking at as far as where water is going to be naturally stored uh, from runoff. Uh, we can use them for agriculture purposes. We can use them for cosmetic purposes, whether it be, um, I mean, cosmetic like using water for uh, sprinkler systems, um, maintenance of 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 grounds for homes and businesses and and drinking water as well okay um, however pollutants can get into um, these watersheds these wetlands and lakes basically just from just from runoff just from any type of precipitation that occurs or uh, sprinkler systems especially in this area the sprinkling systems that uh, that water landscaping uh, areas for businesses and homes um, anytime that you have runoff that's going to occur, it can pick up any type of pollutants, okay, and it can carry those to that uh, particular watershed and have a, uh, have a big impact on the health of the watershed. Uh, so it's very important to, um, to make sure that we're paying attention to the health uh, quality of our watersheds to make sure that the, the runoff that is carried to those, to those lakes and wetlands um, that there's no pollutants that get in there because if there are pollutants that get in, uh, for example, wetlands. Wetlands have a way of filtering those pollutants, but it takes a long time. Whereas lakes, especially if they're man-made lakes, there's really not a natural filtration process that can filtrate any any pollutants that make it into um, that particular watershed. It, it, there's no way of, of maintaining uh, a natural filtration process, so the pollutants will just stay stagnant within that particular water source. So making sure that we uh, we're conscious of, of the things that is being carried in our runoff is very important. Um, the EPA, okay, studies any type of water pollution, but it, al it also focuses on watersheds. And the EPA, it, um, as of right now, say that there's about 450 billion dollars worth of of goods and tourism that depend on the health of watershed, whether it be food, uh, fibers that are produced through agriculture processes, food, um, um, goods that we use from any type of growth uh, from a uh, from an agricultural field. Um, you're looking at almost half a bi uh, 500 billion, so large sum of of uh, of income and economy that's going to be based on the health of of our watersheds. Now we remember we've talked about this before. We know the Earth is covered roughly about seventy percent of water. Um, unfortunately, of that amount of water, okay, about fifty percent is going to be affected by some type of pollutant. It's going to be impaired or threatened by some type of pollutant or a combination of pollutants. Um, whether it be chemical pollutants, whether it be garbage pollutants, um, you're looking at a very large amount of the water that is on our planet that is that is threatened due to pollution. Our leading causes of pollution, okay, this when we're talking about these watersheds, our wetlands and, and lakes that we need uh, for the for the health and quality of of our fresh water, 
some of the main types of pollutants would be sediments, okay, that come from runoff or come from erosion, and uh, pathogens like bacteria. Uh, e. coli is a big one. Uh, other nutrients that are that aren't naturally occurring, like excess nitrogen and excess phosphorus that you can get from agricultural fields. Um, all of these examples, okay, by themselves might not be that big of a deal, but when you get excess amounts, they're, they're causing problems to our uh, to our watersheds okay um, the impairment of our watersheds due to excess bacteria or pathogens getting into the water excess nitrogen causing things like eutrophication uh, excess sediments which can um, take away part of the habitats for the different areas of the watersheds now I mentioned pathogens um, one of the top ones, uh, mercury, mercury getting into uh, water supplies due to, uh, uh, as a result of chemical runoff, alien or uh, exotic species that make it to, uh, make it to our lakes or watershed, uh, lakes or wetlands. Okay, can have an impact on the, the local plant and animal life there, which can cause those particular species to, uh, to crash, um, which then would affect the health of the overall health of that uh, particular uh, watershed as well. Let's say for example uh, boats that that are used in multiple lakes okay one lake might have a um, particular type of organism found in the lake say it's a type of plant and for some reason the plant gets caught up within the uh, the water well of a boat and then that boat gets uh, isn't cleaned properly, and it is taken to another lake and used. And the the plant species that's that's in that boat's well water makes it to uh, a, a different lake that that species isn't found in. So there's really no natural predators to eat that plant species. That plant can actually take over habitats of naturally occurring plants within that new lake, uh, which can which are normally food sources for animals within that lake and so you can see the ripple effect that can happen if the plant the natural or the native plants are taken over by that alien source or that exotic species from a different lake uh, then the the native animals there that depend on that uh, plant for food uh, it's not available so they lose a food source they could die out and then the food chain is is dramatically impacted by that um, by that process so not only pathogens uh, sedimentation but you're looking at exotic species that can also have a have an impact we watched a video I don't know if you remember the video we looked at um, we looked at the health of our fresh water okay and there was a big part where they were focusing on uh, on water supplies or watersheds within uh, the Great Plains right where all the crop fields and the uh, agriculture processes were occurring Atrazine was a big type of herbicide that's used in most of our crop fields. Um, and they've found through studies that atrazine can actually have an adverse effect on on uh, animal life in that area because it, it gets into the water supply through runoff and then it gets uh, ingested um, by animals and by people uh, having a, a negative impact. So there's there's a lot of different types of of these processes that's more pollutants where you don't really see them face value at first that that get into uh, our watersheds and so it's one, uh, another example of of why the the health and the quality of of the watersheds are so important to maintain